Hi, welcome to section 3 of the course to configure Windows Server 2016 ADFS for the Identity Bridge on-prem scenarios. In this use case, we will learn to configure and manage the on-premise authentication capabilities and integration of cloud services into your solution. Especially, you will learn to configure the following features. The usage of basic on-premise authentication mechanisms like basic, Kerberos, claims-based and certificate-based authentication, single sign-on to Office 365 through the authentication to an additional authentication store, the usage of additional claims for Active Directory and an additional attribute store, the integration and customization for self-service password reset and multi-factor authentication, and we will end this use case with additional Office 365 options and the operations related topics to your new created identity bridge. To implement the use case, we will add Office 365 and an additional attribute store and will configure several features on the existing environment. Furthermore, we will use an existing environment for the ADFS B2B scenario. You can build the additional environment in the same way you have created the existing environment. Now let's start with the ADFS farm and web application proxy installation and feature configuration. First, we need to set up the infrastructure requirement. We need to configure the internal and external DNS records for our ADFS infrastructure and the demo claims application. Next, we add a KDS root key to our environments to use and configure group managed service accounts. Afterwards, we will import a SSL certificate for our ADFS configuration and configure the appropriate permissions for the ADFS service accounts to access the private key of the certificate. To request a public certificate, you can use, for example, 90 days free certificates of Komodo. Otherwise, you can also use a certificate from another PKI. With the first step, we create the internal DNS records for login and claims. Double check the IPs before. You should get a result like I got. Next, we generate the KDS root key to create the group managed service account for ADFS in the next step. The time parameter in the command allows us to use the key directly. With the new AD service account CMDLED, we create the service account and define the SPN for the ADFS FQDN. Afterwards, we check the new created service account in the Active Directory Users and Computers Management Console. With the certlm msc command, we will check the imported certificate. In my case, a wildcard certificate. You can also use a certificate from another certificate authority. For the most flexibility and the usage of all functions like device authentication, workplace join and for web application proxy publishings, you should use the following common name and subject alternative names. Next, we will assign the group managed service account the read writes for the associated private key. To install and test ADFS, we will disable the Internet Explorer enhanced security features. Next, we will do the installation over the server manager. Obviously, you can also do that with the related CMD LEDs. Install Windows feature and install ADFS farm. After the successful installation, we will enable the IDP initiated sign on page, which is disabled by default on ADFS 4.0. Next, we will test the basic ADFS functionality with the provided links. The first link is to test the metadata exchange information and the second to test the logon over the ADFS logon page directly to the connected local active directory. To get a better handling for our tests, we will disable the Internet Explorer enhanced security. For sure in productive environments, you should leave the settings activated. Now we will start the installation of the ADFS server role over the server manager. Leave all the other settings with the default values. You can export the configuration settings for documentation or automation. Next, we will configure the ADFS service and use the domain administrator we logged on into the server for the AD connection. Afterwards, we will define the service properties. Choose your SSL certificate. If you use a certificate with subject alternative names or wildcard, instead of a single common name, you need to configure the federation service name, like in my case, login.innovitelabs.ch. At least you can define the display name that you will see on the ADFS logon page. No worries, you can change this afterwards. In the next step, we will choose the created group managed service account to run ADFS. In our case, we will use the Windows internal database to store the ADFS configuration. View the script 
and you can use it to install ADFS by PowerShell. Click Configure to run the installation. To use the ADFS logon page, we need to enable the functionality with the set ADFS properties CMD LED. Next, we check the ADFS metadata information and the logon over the ADFS logon page to the local Active Directory. Because the local AD is the default IDP for the ADFS instance. If the ADFS logon page is not listed under the local internet sites, the logon pop up appears. Log on with your admin credentials. Add the site to the local internet zone and you should get a single sign on behavior. Now that we have configured and tested the ADFS farm, we start to install and configure the web application proxy. Again, the first step is to install the SSL certificate we already used on the ADFS server. Afterwards, we will install and configure the web application proxy over the server manager. As already mentioned on the ADFS part, you can also do that with the related PowerShell CMD LEDs. Install Windows feature and install web application proxy. At least we will test our setup from our management Windows 10 client from external with the same links we already used to check the ADFS installation. Next we will check the imported certificate on the web application proxy server. Next we will add the remote access role in the server manager. Leave all settings default and check the web application proxy role service. Add the needed features. Export the configuration for automation or documentation and run the rest of the installation process. Next we configure the web application proxy server role. Provide the ADFS FQDN and use your administrator account to configure the role. Choose the certificate and start the configuration process. Next we will test our configuration from the Windows 10 management client with the external request. Be aware that you have configured the DNS records in your public DNS zone. Now that we have prepared our basic ADFS and web application proxy infrastructure, we will deploy the claims demo application with the deploy test site PS1 script from the course code package. The application allows us to view the claims related information on a web page and helps us to get a better understanding of the topic. After the base installation, we will install and bind the same certificate we already used for ADFS and the web application proxy to our claims demo app in the IIS manager. For sure, you can use always a different certificate if you don't have a wildcard certificate. Next, we will configure our first relaying party trust in ADFS to use our claims demo app. After the successful configuration, we will test the demo app with the provided links. Now that we have configured our ADFS environment, we can deploy the claims demo app on the application server. You will use the deployment package from the code package download. Next, you will see the new application pool and website. We will configure the bindings to use our certificate. If you want to use the self-signed certificate, you need to install it in the trusted root authority store of all machines you want to use. Next, we will configure the relaying party for the claims demo app in the ADFS management console. We use a claims aware app and provide the application FQDN in the federation metadata address field and click next. In my case, I change the display name of the relaying party and permit everyone to access the application. Leave all the other settings with the default values and uncheck the configure claims issuance policy option. Next, we will test our claims demo app from internal. You should see the claims demo app and you can gather all the information of your federated login on the page. Now we will publish the claims demo app for external access on the web application proxy server with the remote access management console. Use ADFS as a pre-authentication method and web and MSO FBA as the supported client. Under the relaying party section, choose the claims demo app. Provide the publishing settings as shown. Optionally, you can use also redirect from HTTP to HTTPS. Finish the publishing configuration and test the external access from your Windows 10 management client.
With the following steps, we add the password change capabilities to ADFS. We will do the update password task over the ADFS management console. You can also do the same with the CMD LEDs, enable ADFS endpoint and set ADFS endpoint. After configuring the endpoint, you need to restart the ADFS service. Now we will enable the password change capabilities of ADFS for the internal and external access. Restart the ADFS service and test the password change function internal and external on the ADFS logon page. You should be able to successfully change your AD password over this way. To use Azure MFA in our on-premise environment, we need to create an ADFS Azure MFA tenant certificate. Furthermore, we need to configure the ADFS MFA integration, which includes the creation of a new MSUL service principal credential and the binding to the Azure tenant. Next, we will test our new integration with the primary and secondary authentication mechanism options. Now we will add Azure MFA capabilities to our local ADFS infrastructure. For the communication with the Azure MFA service, we need to create a certificate with the new ADFS Azure MFA Tenant Certificate 17 LED on the ADFS server. Next, we will check the new created certificate in the local machine certificate store. Now we connect to the MSOL service to configure the connection between the ADFS server and the Azure tenant. Provide your global administrator credentials for this task. To configure the connection, we need to create a MSOL service principal credential with the shown parameters. Next, we finish the connection configuration with the set ADFS Azure MFA tenant CMD LED and restart the ADFS service. Now we can activate Azure MFA as a multi-factor authentication method in ADFS. Next, we activate Azure MFA as primary and secondary authentication methods to show the possible scenarios. To test our configuration, we will require MFA for our claims demo app in an access control policy of the relaying party trust. Next, we need to register our test user for MFA. In my case, I use the mobile app as preferred verification method. This allows us to get the better introduction to use MFA as a primary authentication method, because the app provides also a random security code. Finish the registration process and open the Claims Demo app external from your Windows 10 management client. Now the app requests MFA and sends a verification message to your mobile app. Approve it and you should be successfully logged in and see the content of the Claims Demo app. To provide our culprit identity in the logon process, we configure a custom theme. You will get the scripts from the course code package. First, we will create a new theme. Don't use the default theme for customization to have a recovery option. But if you really crashed your defaults, just export the default theme from another ADFS infrastructure and import it to your ADFS. Second, we will configure the custom theme with the ADFS Web Theme CMD LED. With the new theme, you get the password change and reset functionality on the logon page. In the last section of this video, we will configure a custom theme to represent your corporate identity. First, we create a custom ADFS theme with the new ADFS Web Theme CMD LED based on the default theme. Don't use the default theme directly to configure your custom setting. Next, we set the custom theme as active with the set ADFS web config CMD lab. From the code package, you will find an update web theme PS1 script and a demo theme. With this, you can see an example configuration. Next, try the ADFS sign on page from internal and you will see the following customization a custom logo, custom background, a custom general terms and conditions link, and a need help link. Remember that the site is in the local internet site and you have a single sign-on experience. Next, we will test the functionality externally from your Windows 10 management client. You will see two other customizations, the change password function and the reset password function. Remember that we have the password writeback option enabled in the previous videos. Test the different options. The Azure MFA link was added with the Azure MFA integration tasks. Now we will test Azure MFA as the primary authentication method. Use your registered test user and provide a secure code from your mobile app. 
the expected result is a successful login. In this video, we have learned to install and configure ADFS and the web application proxy by GUI and PowerShell, configure and customize the HMFA integration, and customize the ADFS theme.